Hello, I'm Anthony. Today we're going to talk about um, what I think is the most important aspect of recording guitars if you're trying to get a decent tone. The concept of gain staging is the idea of having a healthy signal at every single stage of the chain. There, there can never be a moment when you let the signal get out of your control. And that's what we're going to deal with today. There are lots of different ways that you can lose control of your signal and lots of things that you can do to make sure that that doesn't happen. Now, before we kick off, uh, have a look at the description below. If you want to check out my Patreon link, you'll be able to download this project, uh, all of the audio files that are in it, and uh, you'll also be helping me in my channel. I've recorded this new guitar line, um, and it's as simple as it gets. It's literally just a set of six chords going up the scale of E major. Uh, six, not seven chords, because I didn't uh, didn't bother with the diminished chord at the end. Um, there's supposed to be a D sharp diminished at the end, but never, never mind. Um, what I'm going to do is basically play it completely as is, and you can see me turning the output level down already in anticipation of what's going to happen. I'll just play the first couple of chords. Okay, just simple chords. Now you can see that we've got all sorts of numbers popping up on these meters. That's what we're going to deal with today. But the first thing that I really want to deal with is how big this signal is. Can you see it's so much bigger than all of the others? That's because I've manually, manually adjusted the levels of all of these audio files to be roughly equivalent. When you record an audio signal in, and in this case, obviously, we're talking about recording a guitar, there's an ideal um, level that you want to try to aim for. Now, it's one of those subjective um, discussions. You're not going to find an absolute definitive statement as to how strong this guitar signal should be. But the general consensus is that you want to give yourself somewhere between three and six decibels away from zero. What do I mean by that? Double click in this wave. You see the absolute highest point of the wave is uh, this one here. And that's at about minus four dB. So the loudest the signal ever gets is about minus four dB. And in fact, we can actually see that on Insight. Now, there are any number of audio meters available to you. Steinberg has its own uh, called Supervision, which is great. But I use Insight. And the, the number that we're most interested in at the moment is True Peak. This is the absolute loudest the signal ever gets. And I won't get into the intricacies of true peaks, but basically it's counting in between individual samples when the computer basically draws kind of these virtual curves that can go above any single actual digitally stored value. So the true peak is the absolute loudest the signal ever gets. If I play uh, this chord at the end, which is the louder one, there you go. Minus 3.9 is the true peak level. It'll stick there for a couple of seconds uh, according to the, the settings that I've got Insight set to, and then it fades away back to minus infinity. So that's what we're looking for. Somewhere between minus 3 and minus 6 decibels, the absolute loudest the signal ever gets to. And what that means is that we never clip. If anything ever goes above zero in the digital world, that's called digital clipping. It's bad. You should never let it happen under any circumstances. Don't let anybody tell you digital clipping is good. In this context, it isn't. It's better to reduce or attenuate a signal than it is to have to boost it because we've got this signal to noise ratio, which means that if I take a really quiet signal and make it louder, I'm also making the noise that's inherent in this signal. If we listened really, really quietly to something in between one of these chords being played, and I turned it up as far as we could go, there is noise there, okay? So if you increase the level of the entire signal, you're also boosting that noise, and we don't want that. So here we are with our nice, strong guitar signal but we're gonna send it into guitar effects and some of those effects are gonna increase the gain. And what we want to ensure is that while that single process is being carried out, while the signal's passing through that single, that one effect, 
again, it never goes past zero. Now, there's something of a grey area here in the digital world, whether you are allowed to go past zero when you're inside an individual plugin. It's entirely dependent on how that plugin is being developed. It's theoretically possible that inside the plugin itself, it gives an enormous amount of headroom to the internal processing, ensuring effectively that the signal can never be destroyed and then reduces it back before the output. I don't like to rely on those things. I want to be in control and make sure that I never allow my signal to unknowingly go above zero. And so we need to control the gain of this signal. Now I'm going to control it right at the very outset by arbitrarily reducing the signal. So you can see that each one of these audio waves has this little white line. This is the attenuated audio signal. And if I hover over that thing or click on it, you can see that the volume has been reduced by 0.63 decibels. So now I'm going to be setting it to about minus two and a half dB in total. I've dropped the entire level of this signal two and a half decibels below where it, where it was originally recorded into, this, into the, um, the door. So now I've got extra headroom to play with. So now that I've got my signal where I want it to be, I can start looking at my insert chain. Here I've got the copy of Insight, that's just my loudness meter right at the top of the insert strip. And I'm going to demonstrate a couple of features that you need to consider about gain staging with these two effects. Briefly with the, the Bytron first, the majority of our conversation today is going to be on Amplitude. That's where um, we'll do most of our work. But I am going to briefly show you this phaser. I'm going to open another loudness meter on the other side of it. Because what you'll see is that the signal going through this phaser comes out weaker or smaller. So now we're looking at the short term loudness of these two signals. And you can see that there's quite a big difference. There's about a five decibels difference. The signal going into the phaser is five or six dB bigger than the signal coming out. Let's move that over here at the moment. There's a couple of ways we can deal with that. The first answer is the simplest if it's available to us. Most effects have an output level. And on the Archuria products, this is an Archuria plugin. It's right down at the bottom of the interface. Got an output gain level here. So if I set that to about five and a half dB, hopefully these two short term values should now be the same. A bit too loud. I really want these two short term values to be almost identical. So the effect that's being applied to this thing is shaping the sound. It's applying that beautiful phase sound, but it's not making it quieter. I don't want the phaser to make the signal quieter. I want it to make it sound phasey. And so we've controlled that inside the plugin. Now it may be that the plugin doesn't have uh, an output gain or master level, in which case you're going to need to do it via another source. I typically just throw an EQ on. Fab filter EQ is as good as anything, and I can use that to increase the output level in exactly the same way without coloring the sound in any way. Q3 is a very clean EQ, won't do anything to the sound at all. And again, we're pretty much there. Now that's all well and good for single effects where you've got that level of fine control over them. But in multi-effects units, the situation is much more complex. So here we have Amplitube, and I've loaded up this preset. It's in the Amplitube 5 Max folder, if you want to find it yourself. It's called Flangicos. Not the best name, but anyway. And this is a really nice preset to demonstrate gain staging with. So a very brief discussion of how this um, preset's constructed. We've basically got two different paths. The blue line, a DI, stands for direct input, and it's basically a clean signal. It bypasses the amplifier in Amplitube. It goes through this um, Amplus bass driver plugin, and this is one signal, and you can see that gets to the mixer effectively untouched by anything else. We have a second signal path that goes through a flanger, then our amplifier, 
the amplifier has an effects loop into which uh, a reverb is plugged. The output signal from the amplifier is split and travels in two different directions to two different cabinets. We've got one cabinet here, another cabinet here. Those two cabinets are mixed back together with the original DI signal and all three go off to the outside world. So first things first, let's hear it. And we've got some trouble. Red numbers are bad. We've got a true peak number above zero. We're gonna to have to deal with that shortly. So let's just listen to the sound for the moment. It's really shimmery, flangey kind of affair. I'm gonna turn the output volume up a little bit so that you can hear this first chord is distorting. Quite clearly here, that distortion. We're gonna to have to fix that. The reason we're getting that is because this signal that's being fed in is still too strong. And we could simply drag it down, attenuate the entire signal and deal with it from that perspective. But I don't want to do that. I want to deal with it inside the preset. The preset shouldn't be amplifying the sound so much. So I want to control it from, from within. And the way we do that in Amplitube is a nifty little trick. If you go over to the, the gear icons at the top of the window, you've got a set of um, the called 500 series plugins. Basically they're like little mini vertical rack mount bits of kit. I want you to select that, scroll down to the bottom of the list and pick this EQPG. We're gonna pick one of these up and we're gonna drag it over onto the signal path. Now, can you see as I drag it around, lots of different bits of the model turn white. Any line that's white is capable of accepting this plugin and I'm gonna drop it in front of the flanger. And here it is. Now, with these little rack mount units, if you're in stomp box mode and these, uh, this bit of the signal path over here is stomp, stomp box mode, you, you don't actually get to see the effect. You have to open it up by editing it then you can see the effect. And then basically click anywhere outside to come back out. Now the reason I've done that is because we now have a meter. This EQ has a meter on it and we can see how big the signal is. This is how I control the amount of signal being allowed through this unit. Because what I want to do is pull the signal down a little bit before it goes into the flanger. Flangers have this um, peculiarity about them that they very heavily accentuate particular frequencies it's that they're a very dynamic sound and part of the reason why we're getting this distortion is because the flanger is contributing towards that problem. I'm just going to taper off a little bit of the signal that's flowing into the flanger by pulling the gain knob down a little bit. I'm afraid Cubase has just crashed on me. First time in about a year. Absolutely typical. Anyway, I think I'm pretty much rebuilt uh, and I think I was about minus three. I can't exactly tell. Let's, uh, anyway, uh, let's see where our true peak value is. Still slightly high. Before I pull that down any further, I'm just going to have a look um, elsewhere in the signal chain for other stuff uh, to have a look at. Let's have a look at the master output, the master mixer. We've got two different cabinets, and here are our views of both of those cabinets. We're going to need to have a look at the signals uh, flowing in and out of the mixer for both of these cabinets. Cab one first. And I'm just going to trim wherever I see yellow. Not on the master. I'll leave that be for now. Okay, that's pretty tame now. Controlled it. Reset my loudness meter and see whether we've solved the true peak problem. And indeed we have. We're at still minus 5.6 now. But I'm just gonna go back and listen to that first chord again. It's still, there's still a tiny little bit of distortion in there. Now, if we're not getting a reading on the true peak meter to tell us that we've got a problem in this signal chain, 
we can pick up our EQ and take it all around the houses, trying to see if we've got a problem anywhere. I think you're going to find that we don't. We're not getting any yellow or red lights anywhere in this path. So I'm going to pull the drive down into this flange of a little bit more. No coincidence that throughout that entire process I didn't go anywhere near the amplifier. This is basically my, my, my approach of last resort to go into the amplifier and turn the gain of that thing down because that's really in a live setup, in a physical setup, it's the amp where you get your crunch or warmth or saturation or whatever sound you want to use. But generally speaking, I, I tend to find I have much better results by turning the microphones in front of the cabinets down and letting the amplifier do its thing. So many great sounds over the years have been produced with a valve amp turned up to 10. <laughs> you know, it's like, it's a pretty awesome thing. So if you let it do its thing and control it with the, uh, with, with the microphone levels coming out, I generally tend to find I have better results. And so the only thing left for me to do now in order to uh, finish off the gain staging job with this preset is to decide how loud I want my overall master signal coming out of Amplitube because it is still much louder than what went in. About 4 or 5 dB between the short term of the input and the short term of the output. And so this is where I can tweak the master level coming out of Amplitube. This master um, level slider here is exactly the same as the one in the bottom right hand of the interface. If I pull that down a little bit, you'll see the red, red slider move. There you go. So if I knock 4 dB off the total level of the preset, now the short term of those two signals is the same and we've maintained our equilibrium on the gain structure. Lovely, clean, healthy, undistorted signal, which is exactly what we want. Hope you enjoyed that. Please hit the like button if you did. I'll see you for the next one. Thanks a lot.